Hey, please welcome Memorition Arts. Yay! <laughs> Click that one. Uh, yeah. Okay. Come on. Thank you. Hello. Hello. I'm starting the timer. I am timing you horribly. I will okay. go. Hang on. No, wait. Because no, we're, we're not go. up yet. So let go us past let that. us get our presentation up, and then and then start timing. All right. <laughs> Click forward. All oh, right. Oh. There we are. That's what we're doing. Lovely. Yeah. Okay, great. Here we are. Brilliant. Hello. Hello, my name's Marion Duggan, and I'm Laura Wright. We run Memoration Arts. We worked together previously at Ragroof for 14 years. Our new show is called Nightlight Lullabies, and it's an audio-visual uh, illuminated installation, um, five of them, across a city centre, festival site, park or woodland, um, with performative elements, which might include a solo singer, um, appearing above a city street on a balcony as if from nowhere to serenade the audience. We imagine your audience member turning a corner and discovering a female performer dancing underneath a spotlight interpreting the physicality of the new parent. All of our work involves extensive research periods, so coming to your area and meeting people and starting conversations with them about elements of their lives. And for this project, we want to talk to new parents and caregivers about the experience of becoming a parent and talk to them about the songs that they sing to their children or the songs they were sung as children and look at the etymology of that. Um, here are some examples of our early stages of research. Lullaby, lullaby, going upstairs to bed now. Dream, that's the thing to do. So, as part of a high quality participation period, um, a residency in the local areas that we visit, we'll be working with um, parents from many different cultures to put together an ensemble of harmony singers um, that will perform as part of these installations. We're working with some really exciting artists. Um, Vicky Abbott, who works with Wildworks, um, is going to compose a new song based on the research we've done with people, so incorporating their words and uh, songs into a new piece. Um, Thor is going to work with our recordings and make that into a really beautiful soundtrack in which audience members will hear in what we're calling a marsh marshmallow world. And so it will play out over... over Thank you. Uh, it will play out over the, over the, the city. And uh, Lucy is going to design this world called the Marshmallow World. We've been making outdoor work for over 15 years, so we do understand a lot of the challenges that outdoor festival producers face. We're committed to making the piece durable. It can be rebuilt on site when touring internationally, and it will be presentable in light rain. Um, we're looking for commissioning partners to develop the work over the next year, ready for touring in 2021. So please come and start a conversation with us. I'll be here after the pitching sessions and in the marketplace. So come and talk to me if you want to hear more about Nightlight Lullabies. I'm Thanks. sorry, I won't be here. I've got to run home and feed my baby. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Stick it back in there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ascension Dance says we having you. Looking good, Marion. Off you go. Be a mum. Excellent. Lovely. Ascension, here we go. Hello, sir. I can't remember what you've got on there. Uh, so I should have said, I, the alarm's going off at 2.30. So that gives you 30 seconds. Sorry, memory, I didn't say. There we go. Go ahead. What do we, let's go on. There you are. Let's thank, you. Mm, thank you so much. Thank you for everyone for having us. So my name's Ashley Jordan, known as AJ. I'm, I'm one of the directors of Ascension Dance. And I'm based in Coventry. And it's fantastic to see so many people here supporting the arts in Coventry. Traverse is one of our new works, working with Imagineer. So you saw earlier that they did the Bridge Amazing Festival. And Traverse is starting to look at the Imagineer Da Vinci kit. So they've been taking the Da Vinci kit all around places and communities in the city and hosting it. And they came to us and said, right, we've got this amazing bridge. Can you perform on it? Can you dance on it? Can you do flips and stuff off it? And we went, yeah, fine, yeah, whatever, yeah. And we did. And we started to think about how we can physically use that kit to make a performance, but not only use the bridge itself, how can we start to build it? So for those who don't know, the Da Vinci kit is 
one of those bridges that are completely self-sustaining. There's no nuts, there's no bolts, there's no glue, there's no physical adhesives that keep it together. So the only thing that keeps it together is the weight of itself, which is really, really clever. And we started playing with the idea of how we can use these poles as performance and start to build that bridge together. Not only that is that as a company, we're really interested in kind of combination of sport and arts. So we started working with SB Concrete, a parkour company, and how we can start to combine dance and sport, so parkour and free running within our movement style. So what we started to create is a really physical, high energy performance that looks at the combination of uh, arts and sport, but also how can we start bringing the audience into performance. And as part of our performance, we also have a moment where the audience can come along and actually walk over the bridge. And when we did our sharing, that was one of the things that was really interesting, because one person came up and then we had 50, which is mad. We're now looking at seeing if we can get um, a little bit more commissions and more support for next year. We're going to be performing to verse the bridge performance under the bridge as part of Imagineers Bridge Kit, but also we're interested in how it can sustain itself on its own. So going to small festivals and any pilot festivals performing the, the kit there. Um, I haven't used all the three minutes, but I think that's enough information from me. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Great time. Thank you. Uh, and the bridge is built outside. We, we built a bridge at lunchtime, is that right? The bridge outside, can you see me on the can you have any conversations about And are you going to do a bit of parkour on it later, I think? We've got, I'll get a bit of it wet. If it's not too wet. Okay, excellent. Lovely. Can Samba is up next. I think we sort of, let's just uh, whiz you ahead. And that's just, that's lovely. Thank you. There you go. There you go. All yours. Hi. Hi there, I'm Kerry. I'm the uh, musical director of Can Samba, and I'm here today with um, Serena, who's the creative director and sort of costume expert for the company. We're from Nottingham. Um, uh, today, uh, we'd like to present to you the Howlers, uh, <laughs> flamb flamboyant creatures of mischief incarnate. These colourful, genderless beings are at once unknown and yet completely familiar. Uh, in their humanoid playfulness. People love to run to them, view them quizzically from a distance, and on occasion have been quite frightened of them. Uh, they always produce a strong audience reaction, being completely unmissable and totally bizarre. Um, at present, they have no set routines and some simple bits of choreography. Uh, we always give them, or we give the performers who wear the costumes, who are just normal people, you know, just regular people, Sometimes they're professional artists, sometimes they're dancers, sometimes they're people who just go, can I put that on, please? Uh, but we, also, we always give them a clear mandate to go out and cause some sort of delightful chaos in whatever beautiful way they can. Um, so apart from the startling and unmissable vis uh, visual spectacle, a key, a key objective for our howlers is to break down the barrier between performer and audience um, and the anonymity that's sort of established by the completely masking uh, our performers makes this objective really easy. So, you know, people interact with them in a very, very uh, simple and strange way sometimes because, the, you know, they're completely covered. Um, the howlers are exceptional for a range of events to really draw the audience into the action, breaking down that kind of line of audience and performer passing by in carnival, uh, carnival parades and whatnot. Um, they enjoy dancing. We've got a samba band. They quite often dance to our batteria. Uh, but they can simply be a walkabout spectacle for any number of audience. Uh, when audience members get close to howlers, almost at one-to-one, -one, uh, the howlers can create quite intimate and touching moments with gestures such as revealing their palm flowers. Uh, one of our howlers recently brought an audience member to tears with a simple fist bump which initiated the slow reveal of their palm flowers. So the effect that we're finding is quite sort of sublime and quite profound with some people that we meet. Um, People of all ages are reacting with great positivity and with great curiosity and eager to interact. Uh, and we've hashtagged Howler Hugs and we're getting loads of people hitting that hashtag. Um, so, yeah, at present, the Howlers really, are, are really, we're really open to what they can do. They can go to any kind of performance. Um, we just want to see where they can get to and how they might be able to interact in whatever situation they're put into. Um, First and foremost, uh, we're looking for as many gigs as possible. We just want to bring them to life in lots of different situations. Uh, we'd like as many people as possible to experience the joy of seeing and interacting with Howlers with as many gigs as we can take. So come and talk to us afterwards, please. Thank you very much. The clicker. Best last shot. You missed your last photo. Come on. That's the thing, That's the thing of great beauty. That's the thing of great beauty. Right. Uh, Company-ish we have up next. There we are. Let's just enjoy that while we're trying to go. Hi. There we go. 
Are you ready? Right, yeah, clicker. Thank hey. you. I'll give that to, give that to There we go. Great. Okay. Lovely. Hello. Hi, everyone. Thank you. Big up, Angus. Big up, Catherine. Thanks for the opportunity. <laughs> uh, next slide. Yes. Uh, hi, yeah, so we're Company Ish. Uh, we're a new post contemporary circus company. My name's Luke. I'm the artistic director. And this is Mike, our set designer and prop maker. Next slide. And again. Um, so, yeah, we're the, we are the first associate company of No Fit State Circus, which is the largest and <coughs> leading yeah, they are, um, contemporary circus in the UK. Our first production, The Big Big Aga Show, is a tented touring show. Uh, it's 75 minutes long. It was commissioned by Wolf and Forest, London Borough of Culture 2019, and has 11 people in it. I should know that. I think it's 11 people. Uh, 11 one, baby. 11 and 1 baby, and it's uh, ready to tour now for you bookers. Anyway, back to the new show. Now in a minute will be our second production. It will be a mid to large scale outdoor piece. Uh, <laughs> um, we're going to take uh, the roller bowler, which is an ancient circus discipline, enlarge it by... Uh, 200 times. 200 times, he knows this stuff. Uh, and place four performers on top of it. Um, the show will start as... It, ooh, Intimate and intriguing before evolving into a breathtaking large scale spectacle. <laughs> so, thank you very much. This is what a roller bowler is. So, as you can see, there's the tube underneath and then a ball on top, and the Circassian stands on top of it and balances it. That's what we're going to be enlarging 200 times, and that is my bar mitzvah suit. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, here is some initial designs and conceptual thoughts of how it will slit, fit together. Uh, back one. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, so basically, we're very conscious of, as a touring company with a tent, we're very conscious of making things easy to tour and something that can fit into the back of a van. So the whole show is designed to fit into the back of a Luton truck uh, with four seats in it for all of the performers and artists. Uh, next slide. Here's some conceptual things. Guy, guy in the corner. Uh, so yeah, just some conceptual images. Uh, here's the next one. And so yeah, this is something we're really excited about, which is how we can lift the board onto the tube using some sort of kinetic rigging. The impetus for the show is uh, specific learning disabilities, which stuff like dyslexia, dyspraxia, uh, ADHD. Uh, I'm dyslexic. Most of the company have got some sort of stuff. Steak's got a lot. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and the thing we really want to do, all of our work is about celebrating who we are and what we do. 30 seconds, okay, yeah, what we do. So it's about looking at how these brains work differently, how the logic that they have leads to new and better, not better, but, you know, different ways and solutions. Anyway, timeline. Uh, yeah, so we're currently on the Without Walls 2021 shortlist. Uh, we'll find out about that in a couple of weeks. There's our sort of initial R&D plans, and we are looking for co-productions and commissions and partnerships. Thank you very much. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Beautifully to time. So, Dizzy O'Dare, we got coming up with Dizzy O'Dare. Where are you guys? Oh, the clicker. How can we do the clicker? Come up that way. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. I haven't put the timer on yet, my love. Thank you. Thank you. Which point is it? The forward arrow. Yeah. That one. Yeah, lovely. Oh, there we go. Hello. Nice to see you all. How's everyone doing? Is everyone awake? Good, okay. I'm Mike from Dizzy O'Dare. Um, my wife, Alana, is the brains behind the operation, the glamorous one down there. Um, we've been around this year, not that button, <laughs> 10 years! So I know Desperate Men uh, 40 next year and uh, Debs emerges exit 40. We'll get there, we'll get there. Anyway, so we've done Baba Yaga, Without Walls, it's a roaming thing. We've done Phileas Fogg, that's a roaming thing. We've done some circus shows. Um, that's how I pay the rent. Um, but the new show is Falconry Dismay. <laughs> what? Um, so this year, I'm sure a lot of um, companies will agree, has been quite a torrential, weather, battered, windy, wet year. Um, and we were at a festival during one of these torrential rainstorms and going, why can't we just do something really that can go out in this rain? And then we saw in, in a field there was a falconry display with a guy in a Mac and a, a very upset owl and there was a barrier and everyone at that festival was at the barrier looking at this upset owl. <laughs> and we had an idea. 
So we're going to make our own falconry display using performers as the birds. Here's a mood board. So you see, there, there's... That one's an astronaut. Yeah. So um, we're going to make humanoid birds. We're going to have like a culture vulture who reads Tolstoy, um, is pretentious. Oh, hello. Um, we're going to have a contentious owl who refuses to perform, is a bit lazy. Um, we're going to ha Alana's probably going to play a Merlin, like a daredevil, rocketeer, goggles, whizzing around the audience. Everything that can go wrong with a falconry display will happen. Everything that's beautiful about a falconry display will try and recreate. I really want to do that swingy thing, you know, when you throw the thing in the air and the bird majestically grabs it out the air. We're going to do that. <laughs> um, um, one thing we'd like to experiment with is how do we bring the com local community... Yes, yeah. Local community involved. So we're, we're thinking of doing a flash mob of birds with a local community group to join. You know, in Falconry Displays, they have this beautiful finale, you know, classical music and all the birds are flying together and it's gorgeous. We'd like to do that with every possible local community group and create total anarchy at the end of the show. So what we'd like from you people oh. is bookings, obviously. We'd like... Um, Huh? Sounds. Who knew you could do that? Co-commissions and... Maybe just some moral support. Just tell us we're doing all right. Um, now, I should say, we've been very kindly... What? Oh, the, oh yeah. <laughs> um, so we've been funded by applause already, and I haven't told Alana this, but I had an email about two hours ago from the Arts Council to say we've got our funding. <laughs> Kaboom! So it's happening. Um, so, you know, book it. It's going to be mental. Um, love you all. Peace. Respect. Thank you. Thank you very much. Indeed, you're doing all right. There we are. You're doing all right. Oh, this is nice. So everyone will remember Natalie uh, was our formal general manager and is now working for Emergency Exit Arts. So here's Natalie and a young producer. Hi. Hi. Welcome Hi. back. Thank you very much. Can I take this off? I'm too short to stand like this. It's just awkward. Um, so, hi, I'm Nat. I'm here representing EEA today. Whoop, whoop. You've already heard loads from Deb this morning about who we are and what we do. We've had 40 years of making glorious participatory work. And I'm here today uh, to talk... Oh, shit, where's this? Oh, hang on, wait. There, there, Blink, yeah. That's what I'm here to uh, talk to you about today. Uh, so, Blink is huge. It's one of our largest pieces to date. Um, and it's the final chapter of a two-year project called Paper Piece. That's not an image of Paper Piece, that's an image of our blink, our blinking eye. Uh, so it started with our touring piece poem, and we've continued by recruiting 48 young producers from across the UK, Alicia is one of them, uh, to create a commission that focuses on peace building and peace heritage and what that means to local communities. Artists then responded to that, and... Uh, five enormous eyes land in your town to create a walkthrough experience uh, for local communities and groups. Um, oh, I got a little bit lost there. It can take up to 20 people per every 10 minutes. So it takes about 600 people over the course of the evening. And the audience have a really beautiful walkthrough experience um, of all of these interactive installations. And the idea is that they have to create collective action to create change within the space. Uh, so I'm going to hand over to Alicia, who's one of our young producers, to talk a bit more about her experience with us. Yes, thank you. So I'm 20 years old. And like Natalie says, I'm one of the 48 young producers. And I'm from Dewsbury in Yorkshire. I'm from, woo, yeah, I'm from performance a performance background and I'm literally just starting my career in the arts and the Paper Piece Young Producers Programme was my first step into producing. Um, 
from March this year, I've gone from literally knowing nothing about what it entails to be a producer to putting on and producing this national touring program. This opportunity has provided me with the skills and the confidence to pursue my career within the arts and event management. And I've literally heard so many times, that's a photo of me and my team there, um, I'd use a lot of people saying, this is amazing, like something like this hasn't happened in Dewsbury, we've never seen stuff like this before, um, which I think is a great example of how it really did outreach to so many groups of people who wouldn't normally interact with the arts. And I really, really would love to see Blink carried on because it has really changed my life so much for the better and to impact everyone. It's such an interactive thing for all ages, but especially young people and their communities. Oh my god, I'm going to have to take over from you. Okay, so we're looking for festivals, um, light nights and commissions uh, that will... It, you can take Blink in its current form, so all five eyes, these enormous beasts, 15 by 50 metres square, or maybe just have one or two of them. They can be bespoke to your area, so it might be that you want to have a young producer's programme in your area and build a new piece of art. Uh, and it can also be thematically different as well. So at the moment, it's peace, see peace differently. But it might be blink, see activism differently, see your community differently, see all sorts of things differently. And we can offer a scalable model for this with, with lots of kind of add-ons. Um, so we're really excited by its future and what it can offer kind of in terms of community co-creation. Um, so if you are interested, um, you can catch me at the marketplace or I will be floating around afterwards. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Alice. you both. I'll take it. Uh, grand. Lovely. Lovely to have you back, Nat. I'll have the blink. I'll have that. I'll have the clicker. Great. And uh, lots of your own producers are here, is this right? You've got a, a, a little cohort? Yay, excellent. Very, very nice to have you here. Welcome to this lovely sector. Exchange Creative Community up next, please. How are we doing? Where are we? Oh. Oh, okay, here we go. That's it, that's it. Quickly and quietly, quickly and quietly. Marvellous. There you go. I'm hoping the slides just do it by itself, but um, uh, it's a visual aid. Um, we're from the exchange uh, in Morecambe. Becky's at the back, Hayden. Um, I've been delegated, sorry. Um, so yeah, we're, we're a community-led arts project. Uh, we're f nearly five years old. We've done all kinds of different things over that time, um, working with the community, um, especially the creative community there, um, and trying to engage with uh, as many different groups in kind of context as possible. Um, the most recent example of that um, is uh, a crazy golf course, ultimately, that we uh, made for uh, our main festival that we run in summer, Make My Day. I don't know if anyone's ever been to Make My Day. Uh, so Make My Day is basically, for us, it's a big showcase of local talent, um, all the different creative uh, skills and experiences in the area that we don't personally feel have ever really kind of seen the light of day uh, nearly enough. Uh, so, uh, it's very bright. Yeah, is that all right? Um, so the pictures are kind of just, yeah, yeah, look at them, see them. What we made is a six-hole crazy golf course. Each hole was made with a different local artist. There's an opportunity for them to basically... Um, do something that would um, be really kind of, uh, well, I suppose the main thing for us is we don't like doing things that kind of sit on walls, gather dust, um, aren't used, aren't engaged with, aren't touched, aren't experienced. Um, so Crazy Golf was a really uh, interesting opportunity for us to do something um, that would be played by loads of people. And on the first time it went out, over 6,000 people engaged with it over a weekend. Um, so we've worked out that basically 3,000 people a day is the capacity for the golf course. Um, a lot of people at Vintage by the Sea, um, especially with smaller children and families, um, found it to be the highlight of their weekend. Um, at Make My Day, again, it was something that uh, a lot of our community was incredibly proud of. Um, so each artist that created a whole um, worked with a different community group in our area. Um, so whether it was primary schools, youth clubs, um, food clubs, um, lots of different groups. Uh, so yeah, this is something that we're looking to tour. It's going to be the first thing um, from our project and from our community. Um, that we want to take outside of Morecambe and see if anybody else is interested in doing. Um, it's loads of fun. Um, we've got loads of kind of um, uh, sets um, and different kind of ways we can present it. It fits in a 10 by 10 meter space. Uh, yeah, ultimately, if you want to come and see one of the holes, we've got it in the marketplace um, at the end of the day. And um, this is the rules. Uh, one of the ma basic ones is don't stand on the golf course, um, which we've learned because it's saving us loads of money in repairs. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, but yeah, so this is, that's what we're talking about today. For us as a community, it's a really exciting opportunity to take something from Morecambe to the wider world. It's the first chance of doing that in a collective way. Um, so we're really desperately kind of hoping that we'll get some bookings this week um, that um, will hopefully give our community a little bit of a boost and also get them to be experiencing being part of a wider event and wider festival alongside other artists and hopefully being inspired from that environment. Um, so yeah, please consider us equally. Um, if you're interested um, in this kind of project and working in a similar way to create something with the community, um, this was very much about a journey for the artists that we were working with and supporting, and they did that in a really socially engaged way, but equally, um, in the process of doing that, we did talk about various other ideas around them being topical, heritage-based, um, and kind of context-driven. So for us, we don't really do anything unless it's something that we care about or there's a connection to. Um, so we're really interested in working with other groups to produce their own courses, um, if that's something that's interesting to people. Thank cool. you. Oh, there's a bit more. Sorry, I thought we were at the last slide. Uh, so we are going local, local, fabularium time. Uh, a bit more coughs, so let's just whistle. Oh, this looks great. So we're going to be able to play golf out there, is that right? Excellent, excellent. Always up for a bit of golf. Sorry. Yay, sorry, there were so many slides. Hi! Hello. Do you want this? Yeah, Yay! She does. Thank you. Cool. Oh, Go. oh my goodness. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Um, we are the Fabularium. Oh, no. Uh, no, that's not no, us. that's not us. Stop the clock. With the Fabularium, hello everybody. We're from Coventry! Yay! Cough, cough, cough. Um, my name's Jess. Uh, my name's Gareth, up at the top left here. And then our producer, Lou. Important lady, where's Lou? Give her a wave. Yeah, speak to Lou if you want to speak to anybody. If you want to speak to her, speak to her. Yeah, great. Okay. Um, and we're here to present to you our new show for 2021, which is Rhyme. Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner, based on the old uh, Samuel Coleridge poem. Uh, it's about a sailor's sort of journey through purgatory and how he has to smart death to kind of come back to land. Yes, yeah, so with this show, we are trying to expand in every sense and grow as a company. So we want to further integrate tech and sound, but we want to have the new skills of fire and circus. Fire. And this show, uh, we're looking to uh, grow from where we are now to like mid to like large scale audiences, like big numbers. And, like and our on. themes are maturing as well, so um, our target audience, not in that way, but um, our target audience is 10 plus, <laughs> with, um, yeah, with, it, with the aim of 10 plus, but with every Fabularium show, there's always something for everyone. Let's have a look at what it's going to look like. Ooh. Ooh, look Ooh. at that. Ooh. Sexy. Anyone know Johnny Dixon? Johnny <laughs> Dixon did that, he's ace. Yes, yeah, so um, this is the idea for the static show that we were thinking of, so all the sails will be able to have projections on, and we'll have aerial rigging and poles for all of that, and then the fire is fire. everywhere. Mm. And then uh, just the next one, we've got a little bit of a floating set. It's quite dark, actually, but it's like a bit of an, another boat from like the underworld with the two main characters of death and life in death, which is a bit cool. Mm. Um, so let's just give you a quick, quick timeline thing. So early R&D stages start early 2020. Uh, and then we're going to hopefully put the bid in uh, late 2020 to make uh, and rehearse in spring 2021. And then um, get it out on tour, summer. 2021 and beyond. Mm -hmm. uh, so, what are we looking for? What are we looking for? We're looking for <laughs> supporters and funders and potential collaborators. Uh, yeah, and like artistic collaborators, because oh, yeah. you know we want to do some circus and like pyro. So, anyone who knows stuff about that, uh, we want to talk to you. That'd be good. Uh, bookers and programmers, obviously, to get it. And then international interest. Now, I got a little bit scared about the whole Brexit thing. So, okay, so maybe anyone from like Australia or something, that'd be really cool. <laughs> so, yeah, so a um, bit further stuff. afield. But, oh, okay, well, uh, would, would you like a quick song? Is, okay, right, okay. Well, it wouldn't be a fabulous pitch without a little bit of a song. If you want to keep in touch, please use our social media. Hey, haul away the fabularium. If you want to talk to us and ask us lots of questions. Hey, haul away the fabularium. Away, hey, we'll be docked and ready at the marketplace. Hey, haul away the fabularium. Br Bring your gold medallions to fund us. Hey, haul away the fabularium. Hey, haul away the fabularium. Woo! Thank you very much. Thank you kindly. Excellent. Excellent. So spontaneous. Just made that up. 
Okay, oh, we're still local. Highly sprung, here we are. Mark and Sarah, staying with the Coventry theme. Here's your lingy. Here's Mark and Sarah from Highly Sprung. We're going to look so dry now. <laughs> so, um, we are Highly Sprung, and uh, we're pitching our new show, which is called... Cast away. Nina Simone, here's a bastardized quote, said, we as artists have a voice and people understand our voice. So if we have that, it's our responsibility to tell people what we believe and what's important in the world. Um, so we are doing cast away. Massive apologies because you're going to see this image again. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> it's not that was yet. when I was quite thin. Now it hangs over the harness. Um, <laughs> now it's time to so. start the show. We have done uh, uh, Urban Astronaut for a while. We have our Ralph the Flying Machine that goes up and down and I spin round. And it's great, it's painful, but it's great. Um, but we wanted to start thinking differently. How can we take our flying machine and alter it or even make a new one? So I was lucky enough to go to Terrega with this, this Angus. This is all your fault. And um, I saw this lovely lady, slightly crazy, hanging by her hair and spinning round and round. Um, so, we thought, what happens if a flying machine could go round? So, um, I designed that. Um, I um. actually, well, I designed it on the back of a serviette, and the guy who actually built it made it good. I come up to around about there, that's six foot. So, it is friggin' massive. Yeah, it's got a laser. Um, so, this is the engineer's wife. He was so proud of it, he stuck her in it and made her fly in it. Um, and it is fully gyroscopic, so it goes, it goes higher than this roof. We have rehearsed in here, but it, we can't go all the way over for that. So the machine itself goes 360, it goes 180, and the performer is in a harness which allows them to tumble as well as pirouette. So the piece itself um, is in a response to the impact that we think that Urban Astronaut has had. It's engaged audiences across the country and in some places in Europe where people have come and said to us how important it was that it gave them an opportunity to have conversations that they might not normally have, especially on an everyday walking through the street situation. And I don't think that the entire people's opinions have changed very much about climate change. I think the voices are starting to grow, but we haven't done enough, and we still want to be part of that conversation. And we have been working with the Canal and River Trust and the City of Culture 2021 an environmental producer. We're a landlocked city, but 80% of all our waste will end up in oceans, and we want to do something about that. So Castaway is looking at awakening the keeper of the canals, who is a beautiful creature, who is feeling the burden of the pollution upon her, and she's waking up to challenge our disposable culture, and hopefully we're looking to engage audiences in that conversation. So we are looking to make this into a full show for 2021, but we're going through R&D next year. And we're really looking for somewhere big to rehearse, because it doesn't fit in here, we've tried. And we're also looking for people who want to book us, book it and work with us for 2021. And we're also looking for people who have a real commitment to wanting to work through education and outreach because we want to put together a programme where we can genuinely go out and have authentic relationships with the audiences that we are performing to. Thank you. Quick shout out, initial R&D with Upswing Aerial and the beautiful, wonderful queen that is Vicky. So thank you. Thank you very much, guys. The beautiful queen that is Vicky. How marvellous. Just more productions. So for... T oh, hello. Hello, here we go. Just one more bit. Um, just taking myself back to the Caribbean. Nice. Shall I press play?
hello, hello. Greetings, greetings. Yes, I am Mrs. Mama Cookery. Um, I've come here to explain to you our uh, video. It says it quite all, actually, and as you can tell, I'm bilingual. Our show is spoken in a Jamaican accent. So this is the mother and daughter show. Why did I do this? Uh, call it a midlife crisis and Brexit. I am a real chef and I've traveled all around the world, collecting all these recipes and stories which go on through centuries, but uh, nobody was talking about them, so I decided to create this show. Um, I have lots of experience of working in engagement and in exploring people's stories with food. Are you still playing it? Oh, it's still going. It's on a loop. Anyway, well, today I'm here because we were really lucky to receive a commission from Articulture, and I want to say thank you to them from Wales. And we got to experiment it and learn by our mistakes, which have also made our show awesome. So what we're looking for today is we're looking for partners. We're also looking for another commission to develop, Fatina's Cantina, which is an eating sensation show, hopefully to be out there in 2021. One. But for now, I'm not going to keep talking because I think the video says it all. And I'm here. Do what your mama tells you and book this show. Oh, my trip to Durham comes to life. Okay, Mr. Wilson, second liners. Here we go. Here we are. Go, Sonia. Go, Sonia. Here you go. It's that one. It's that one. The pointy arrow. Yeah. And Ruby Baker, who's our producer. Oh, did you get the first bit of it? Yeah. Good. Um, <laughs> we're presenting Promised Land, um, which was created this year um, it, with the support of Durham Brass Festival and Arts Council England. Woo! Um, Promised Land oh, is inspired by the early 90s rave scene, of course. Um, when disused warehouses and open fields were transformed into hotbeds of communal dance experience, when young people, fueled by a secretive and dynamic and radical youth culture, mobilized in their thousands. The show is also inspired by and acknowledges the scene's subversive response to the Section 63 of the 1994 Criminal Justice Act, which enabled police to do, among other things, uh, shut down events that featured music characterised by the omission of a succession of repetitive beats. No, no, no clues for who that's targeted at. Um, audiences are invited to a rose-tinted, brassy, nostalgic trip to a secret location. From the moment you register for the event, audiences are swept into a curated archive of content, including answering machine messages, old school flyers, and interactive online material, all of which give insights into the historic experience of raving, its impact on the social and political landscape, and its legacy. Picture four. Yeah, good. This teaser campaign also drip feeds more information about the live show and the secret location and what to expect on the night. Promised Land is not a rave. Uh, it's performatively and sonically very different. It's a much, much bigger audio experience of Mr. Wilson's second liner's live brass homage to the era of rave. Audiences relive the adrenaline-fueled hijinks of trying to find a secret location. But, on, um, but once the music starts, it's one long, continuous set with eight players interacting with crowds across several platforms, blowing solidly for one hour. It's like a musical marathon, taking in all the highs and lows of an epic rave journey. <laughs> <laughs> We're also working with new musical... Look at that goddess. Um, new musical collaborators. This is Melanie Williams. Um, 
for those of you who remember that, and uh, internationally renowned DJ Dr. Weevil D. Storm, who mixes and scratches live sound uh, with archive audio interviews that are sort of all disorientatingly broadcast throughout the show through a massive 360 sound system. I should say, all of these images come from Promised Land, which was um, shown in July in Durham, and we worked really closely with Durham Brass Festival to find a location that could accommodate up to 600 people but still remain discreet and secret. Ruby worked really hard on that. Uh, this is a loading bay, um, this is a loading bay, was a loading bay of, um, of a shopping centre. The show is modular and can come in and out um, and integrate and respond to indoor and outdoor locations. Promised Land questions how youth culture has transformed over the years. And as part of the experience, Mr. Wilson's Second Liners would like to offer young contemporary artists uh, training experience and opportunity to be integrated uh, as part of the event. If you would like more information, oh, that's, nothing's happening. Um, if you would like more information, um, myself and Will and Ruby will be in the marketplace. Uh, we have a lovely film, uh, which is more than three minutes. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you.